Hey, how are we, Rev Youth? We're back again with another parable, and this is parable number 13. Today we're going to be looking at another parable where Jesus is referring to the, the second coming, where he's coming back for his believers for the church. And it's actually a relatively small parable compared to the one that we read in last week's message where we were talking about Jesus separating the wheat from the weeds. Today we're going to be talking about a growing seed and we find it in Mark chapter 4 starting in verse 26 and it's ending in verse 29. And so this is what Jesus shares about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Now again, we'll highlight the fact that Jesus uses a lot of farming references. And that's because Jesus is talking to an audience of people where they understand farming re uh, references. These are farmers. These are people that spend all day out in the field harvesting, throwing seeds. So he's speaking their language. And that's something important to know about these parables. Jesus is talking to a real audience who's standing in front of them. And like any good storyteller, he is relating it to their lives. He's relating these biblical truths to their lives. Now, the majority of you know very little about planting seeds and, and sowing seeds and harvests, but the truths that we can pull out of this are, are still very real in our lives. And so the heart at what Jesus is trying to get here is that, again, nobody knows when the kingdom of God is going to come. It comes in seasons. The church is in seasons. And we can look throughout the history of the church. There's been different seasons of the church growing. There's been great awakenings. The, there was the early church where thousands of people were getting saved. There, there was the season of Constantine where Christianity was becoming the, the well-respected religion and, and following Jesus was, was the, the well-respected route. We look at even just our nation. We were a nation founded on biblical truths, one nation under God. And so we can see kind of these seasons of the church throughout the church's history. And that's what Jesus is referring to. We, we don't know when Jesus is coming back in the second coming, but what we do know is that when, when the time is ready, when the harvest is ready, when there is the, the grain that is in the ear, as, as the scripture says, because it says this, it says first is the blade, then the ear, and then full grain in the ear. When the grain is in the ear, when the whole process of this seed that was once sown bearing fruit, when the whole thing has gone through its process, then it will happen. Then the sickle will come. Then the harvest will come. And so what Jesus is sharing with us is, again, we don't know when. The earth, the earth produces by itself. There's seasons that happen here. And so we are in a season as the church where we want nothing more than for everybody to produce godly fruit, to, e to have everybody know who Jesus is and understand the gospel, not just the gospel that they've interpreted for themselves, but the true gospel, the gospel that says that Jesus is the Son of God who died for our sins. And, and through that, leading to repentance, where we repent for those sins that put Jesus on the cross so that we could have a relationship with the God that created us. As the church, we're in the season of where we are going to continue to preach the gospel until Jesus comes back, until the harvest is ready. And so our takeaway from this parable is this, we don't know when. I think this is a challenge for many of us because we like things to just happen. We like for the finished product to come to us in minutes and seconds. We're, we're a microwave generation. We don't like to wait for things. And so we, we would say that we don't want to wait for Jesus to come back. We just want him to come back now. We just want to be in heaven now. And what Jesus is sharing with us is, listen, it, it's a process. There's a season. And when it's the season for the harvest, Jesus will come back for his church. So an encouragement for you guys today is this. Until Jesus comes back, whether that's during your lifetime or not, continue to live your life in a way that produces godly fruit. Why? So that when other people look at your life, they see a transformed life. They see something that's different than theirs. And it leads them to this place of where they may start questioning their own beliefs, questioning what they believe and why they believe it. Because they see someone 
who stand so firm on what they believe and why they believe it. And it, and it leads them to this place of asking questions and you can lead them to Jesus, lead them to the gospel, lead them to this place of the repentance of their sins where they can put their faith in Jesus. And so Rev, you, I, I wanna challenge you guys today. I wanna challenge you with this idea of keeping your mind focused on heaven, knowing that Jesus is real. There will be a day where he comes back and living your life like you know it. Living your life in such a way that you would say, I know Jesus is real. Today may be the day that he comes back for the harvest and I want as many people to go to heaven with me as possible. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your word and God, I thank you for the reality that even just a couple of verses in your word can lead us to such great revelations, Lord. God, I thank you that uh, you are a patient God wanting as many people as possible to put their faith in you before Jesus returns, God. And I, I just pray that you would give us the faith as your followers to live lives that look differently, knowing that we are in the season that we are in for a purpose. And God, you want us to be fruitful in it. So God, we just thank you for Jesus and the reality that we get to have a relationship with you because of him. And we pray all of this in his mighty name. Amen. Today we're going to be looking at the parable, uh, shoot, start it over again. Three, two, nope. Three, two. No, you didn't say one. I never say one. Really? Yes. <laughs> I'm just playing. Okay, go.